And the next presentation uh, will be given by Professor Emilia Karova and senior expert Magdalena Kaznakova from the Medical University of Sofia. And their topic is uh, simulation based education, right? Okay, the floor is yours. Firstly, of course, I would like to thank you very much uh, to our uh, hosting institution, University of Crete, for this uh, great organization, especially for this opportunity um, to come together again with our partners uh, from the other universities. And uh, thank you also uh, for sharing uh, these emotions, uh, because I know that uh, teamwork uh, every time um, works uh, great and uh, we could go further uh, to achieve the goals of the Ingenium only if we are working in this atmosphere of the teamwork. So thank you very much also for the uh, previous uh, presentators because uh, they organized a really uh, nice uh, workshop. So our part will be present today will consist actually three uh, modules. I will take um, the first part of the presentation, uh, some opening words, and um, let's say briefly to introduce uh, you um, a brief overview of uh, the university innovative uh, approach recently. After um, that, I will give the floor uh, to Prof. Um, um, Emilia Karova, which is uh, coming from the Department of uh, Conservative Dentistry, Faculty of Dental Medicine of the Medical University of Sofia. And after that, we are very proud because here among us, it's um, our uh, post uh, doc, uh, Dr. Um, Evgeny Stanev. He is uh, here and uh, like a great uh, finish of our presentation, he will share with us uh, some uh, ideas and uh, some thoughts on the uh, point of view of uh, students and um, young uh, scientists in uh, Medical University of Sofia. So my name is Magdalena Kaznakova. Maybe some of you uh, don't know me. I'm from the beginning of the project and I'm uh, really uh, heartful uh, uh, that uh, today I'm not only administrative uh, coordinator, uh, but uh, also I'm part of the big local Bulgarian team, which is uh, manage uh, in genuine initiatives in my institution. Maybe next slide. So here I tried to, um, to point out some benefits and some limitations. Of course, we are very proud that uh, we reached a situation with, where we could say that, especially after the COVID pandemic, we have implemented in the university structure and learning. Uh, of course, I intentionally put it in learning in the green because for us and for the top management of my institution, um, there is a very uh, strong correlation between the green and digital transition. And we think that uh, using the digitalization of our institution, we are going further to implement also the sustainable development goals. So for this reason, I will not focus on the first half of uh, this slide, but on the second one, because I think that our limitations, uh, they're our uh, today's tasks, and we have to focus our attention upon them. Uh, you see here that uh, we started uh, from our uh, students and we try um, to motivate them and to feed their curiosity, especially to deep their understanding scientific uh, concepts. Uh, we tried to consider new media uh, to be situated in their uh, training ships and um, to provide to them in modern healthcare uh, education. For this reason, we tried to implement in classes which combine online face-to-face -face activities. Let's say that um, for especially 
because Medical University of Sofia consists four separated faculties, but we are also in the field of the medicine. We have faculty which is in the field of the medicine, dental medicine, uh, pharmacy, public health and care. But uh, to be a medical doctor, it's a regulated profession. And for this reason, we have a very strict restrictions. I, think, I mean, on the national level, for this reason, we couldn't provide um, total education, let's say, online. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, we used to provide some lessons, some courses online, but uh, the practice showed us and convinced us that it's not possible um, to our students to go only online. They have to be, of course, in their clinics. They have to uh, study, especially in their uh, uh, team framework. Uh, for this reason, for us, it's very important to implement exactly this combined version of classes, which consists online and face-to-face -face activities. Of course, for us now, it's a big, big challenge to implement and to use cloud, uh, cloud technology, gamification, artificial intelligence, live streaming lectures, because for this reason, of course, we need um, material um, facilities. We need a big budget to invest, to allocate it, and to improve, uh, especially our material base at the university uh, level. Now, I have to, to confess, and for this reason, you will see at the below of the red text, dominant current situation, of course. Uh, it is predominantly traditional courses, seminars, lectures. Yeah, yes, we have to confess that uh, the day in uh, our institution, most of the our education models are old fashioned. Uh, and they rely on the experimental results on uh, informed textbook uh, teaching. Our old-fashioned way of the teaching reluctance, uh, it's mostly because most of our lectures, they need to be educated. They need to be upgraded with new technologies. And this is very important for them uh, to go abroad and to meet um, their uh, co-workers, their um, partner researchers, to share with them experience, especially, of course, to get back best practices from our partners' um, institutions and come back uh, to medical university to could implement the new know-how. It's very important for us, and I think that the purpose of our alliance is exactly this, to fill this gap, uh, because, uh, of course, uh, we are coming out, uh, I, I couldn't say low develop because we have very famous uh, researchers, but we need to, to develop this organizational culture, you know, to open minds of the, our lecturers, of our administrative staff, especially of the, our top management to implement these new strategies. And uh, next slide. From the previous year, actually, we have the real results from the implementation of our digital strategy at Medical University. Uh, so here you could see the estimated uh, deadline. You could see, um, I will not focus on the slide, but let's say that we have the principle and the strategic documents. They are our starting point from where we would like to implement the real changes. Now we have the strategic documents and um, our top management, of course, lay on them. But uh, to go further, uh, we need really to implement them in the real um, way of the education. Next slide. Um, maybe some some uh, key data for the institution you see here. Uh, we have uh, around 46% uh, of our students or almost equal of uh, 5,000 students, they are foreigners, they are coming abroad. 
actually in the field of the dental medicine, because Prof Professor Caro is here and I'm looking at her and I know that uh, her faculty is full of, let's say, um, Greek students. And our neighbor country, they uh, prefer to be educated, especially in the field of dental medicine, because we really provide a very high level of education. And uh, for this reason, I hope that uh, this possibility for the online entrance exams. We open the door of the institution and uh, we don't uh, create much more obstacles because it's very important when the student uh, start to think where to go and to apply, to know that the process of entering enrollment in the institution, it's easy for her or for him. Um, of course, on our uh, website, we try to manage course catalogs, resources centers, and every kind of the resources which is uh, useful. Uh, uh, data base, uh, of course, of uh, online learning resources to be available even on the phone of the students. And everywhere they are going, they could track and uh, to see their, uh, not only their program, but um, also uh, to check their interactive uh, materials and to educate it yourselves. Uh, but here we have a problem because we have to, to transit every kind of materials. We have a book, book, uh, big, big books, and we have to um, translate them. Uh, we translated already them in English, but we have to moderate them in the module that the students use, used freely with open resource uh, access. Uh, next slide. So, um, <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe to mention here our ambitious. Of course, our ambitious included further sustainable mobile learning. Of course, our um, approach of education has to go in the direction using the model of pedagogical reasoning and action, the model of uh, students uh, brought uh, learning, exactly uh, the flipped classroom model especially for our undergraduate level students. Because now the situation is that we have lecture in the front of the students and of course uh, some uh, homework uh, activities. But we would like to put the lecture amongst the students. We would like students not to be only educated, not to be active participate in uh, this process of um, achieving uh, new updated information. Uh, the field of medicine is uh, it's a regret in some uh, sense, uh, but our students most of them uh, using different kinds of tools, especially the Erasmus programs. And recently we used to send more and more students recognizing their um, credits, recognizing their education uh, abroad and coming back at my institution, they opened the minds of their um, friends and uh, their colleagues and uh, they transfer this new uh, thinking coming uh, from abroad. And next slide. Yeah, some informal clips, unit staff, students. We're trying to go online. Uh, our, our culture is not to be online. Like Bulgarians, we prefer uh, to meet people personally. And uh, we don't imagine that we will transfer our education to be online. But digitalization and now will provide us another possibility to, to uh, get together and uh, to meet each other much more easily. And for this reason, of course, we are equipped uh, with all kinds of the let's say, new technologies, I hope that we will keep, further go uh, keep us, especially our lectures with the modern laptops and so on, because they uh, need it uh, to not only to be equipped, but also to be educated how to use it. Uh, next slide, yeah. Uh, we are very proud with our central medical library at uh, MOOS because it's really a place of digital change. 
it's a heaven uh, for the students because uh, there they you could implement every kind of the innovative uh, apps, especially apps. Uh, so yeah, next uh, next slide uh, here. Maybe uh, please uh, concentrate on the photos because these photos coming from our centers in the Faculty of Medicine. We using uh, every kind of the facilities now um, to create our new core facility center. And I cross my fingers that we will succeed. Maybe uh, at the end of this year, you, uh, we will have it. And also we will open uh, for uh, using of um, for your students coming from your institutions. Uh, next slide. It's also uh, included some photos. Next slide. Oh, something it happened. Yeah, and and uh, this is the last uh, slide on behalf of me. But uh, here I would uh, like only very briefly. Um, to stop your attention on the usage of our um, internet tools. Google Classroom, 90% of our lectures, outside of this, they are of course going in the classical classroom. They also using the Google Classroom, screen sharing, chat room, listening, watching materials, Google documents. Uh, now we are using Drive to, to storage our files and hope that uh, very soon we are allocated special budget for this. We will prepare some kind of the ERP and something like that system uh, to integrate it, all kinds of the um, bra no browsing, but um, let's say um, systems, different systems, accounting systems, um, also educational systems to be integrated in a friendly um, environment and ecosystem, self-directed working skills. And especially for us, it's very important student evaluation of an a unit lesson. So um, after a COVID period, we receive, of course, many, many complaints from our students that uh, we weren't uh, uh, prepared enough uh, online resources and so on. And for this reason, we started from the beginning. Uh, for us, 2023 was the uh, year which we understood that we have to modernize and we have internationalized our uh, systems and uh, to connect it, the digital again, I will say, and the uh, uh, green transition of uh, my institution. So thank you for your attention. I, I give the floor to Prof. Karova. So good afternoon to all the present, present participants in this uh, auditorium. As I was uh, introduced, I'm a doctor in dental medicine. So it's a profession that is quite, quite different from your professions. But I hope at the end of my short presentation, you will be quite closer to the possibilities uh, and to the modern uh, trends in dental medicine nowadays. Very shortly, I want to say a few words about uh, our faculty, because I'm proud to say this is uh, the oldest uh, state educa educational institution, and uh, we teach uh, master's uh, in dental a degree in dental medicine, postgraduate specialization, and doctoral degrees in accredited dental specialties. Our faculty uh, exists since 1942, and uh, its foundation was as a department of dentistry in uh, Sofia University in the Faculty of uh, Medicine. It was known as Faculty of Dentistry since uh, 1951, and nowadays uh, it exists uh, under the name of the Faculty of uh, Dental Medicine. We <clears throat> educate not only Bulgarian, but foreign students uh, as well. And in uh, the last uh, school year, we have uh, 830 Bulgarian students and uh, 738 uh, foreign students. Uh, and they are coming from 
37 EU and uh, third countries, which is um, a great uh, variety of uh, nationalities in uh, our faculty. The teaching staff consists of 143 professors, associate professors and assistant professors. And we have uh, eight special departments in different uh, specialties of uh, dental medicine. The major objective of our faculty management board, of course, is to continuously improve and uh, modernize all areas of our activity. On the first place, the education, then we have the research, the staff, and of course, the facilities. The facilities for our profession are very, very important. Our, <clears throat> sorry, our educational facilities, they include on the first place, the auditorium, I'll show you in uh, some slides uh, our auditoriums, the preclinical rooms, the clinical rooms, of course, seminar rooms, and uh, the specialized uh, laboratory. Uh, our auditoriums are five in number, and uh, I'm showing uh, on this slide the third and the fifth auditorium. The fifth one is our newest uh, auditorium, and um, we have it uh, from the previous year in the 2020. 23, this is one of our seminar rooms. The clinical and preclinical training in my profession are very, very important, of course, because we have to acquire and our students have to acquire a lot of skillfulness in uh, different uh, technologies. So their education starts with a preclinical education. And an example of one of the preclinical rooms, this is uh, our implantology center. As you see here on the right part, uh, uh, it's your left, uh, sorry here. This is a uh, phantom head, uh, this is a workstation. Then we have a um, hall for seminars or lectures. And uh, as you see here, there's a big uh, window. And through this window, you can have some demonstrations and see demonstrations that are held uh, on the dentinal units uh, here. Uh, this is another example of our clinical rooms. These are two renovated uh, clinical rooms for conservative uh, dentistry. And uh, you see that uh, each student uh, has a uh, uh, um, a place where to work. It's only the place for this uh, student. Uh, and uh, this is very important because um, uh, this is uh, a way to train them to be uh, disciplined and uh, how to organize the, their working place. Uh, one of uh, our challenges is uh, to treat the children. And uh, these are examples of uh, some of our clinical rooms in uh, pediatric uh, dental medicine. And uh, as you see here, with these uh, drawings uh, on the windows, uh, we tried to make the environment uh, much uh, better for them, not to be uh, so nervous uh, during uh, the procedures. And uh, on, the, uh, on the bottom of the slide, you see one room of uh, dental prophylaxis room where the children are studied how to clean properly uh, their teeth and uh, what uh, should be their oral hygiene. So uh, this is one example for pediatric uh, dental medicine. Maybe the biggest uh, challenge for us uh, started uh, in 2020 when the pandemic of COVID-19 started and uh, it was really difficult for us uh, how to organize the the practical training of students, especially the clinical one, not the preclinical, because you know that uh, because of the danger for the staff, for the students, for the patients, uh, we didn't know how to how to do it. But um, the faculty management board decided to to buy and uh, to sorry and uh, to equip all the clinical rooms with uh, phantom heads and uh, students work there in pairs. So this was a kind of, uh, it's a very nice simulation really uh, of uh, a patient. It's not a real one, it's not talking, it's easy, but uh, yes, no crying, nothing, but uh, uh, it's easy because uh, you, you can uh, uh, simulate the position of the body and all the other 
um, specific things concerning the technique uh, of uh, our profession. Uh, about uh, the uh, theoretical training, uh, we used the uh, classroom. Uh, and uh, here we had the lectures online. And then we now nowadays we use for tests, for seminars. So nowadays we are having lectures in the auditorium, but we still use uh, Google Classroom for the tests uh, and uh, the, the seminars. And now something specific to the end of uh, my presentation, uh, because uh, modern dent dentistry goes uh, hand in hand with uh, innovations in all areas of uh, our profession. So I'll try briefly to present some of the innovations that um, are introduced to students uh, and uh, to postdoctoral students, and they are able to, to use them to some extent. On the first slide, I want to start with the lasers that are used for diagnostic process of uh, dental uh, carriers. This is uh, a tool called uh, DiagnoDent, and uh, it is uh, using a pulsed uh, red light. So this is a quantification of the fluorescence uh, from the bacterial product, which is changing constantly. Uh, depending on the degree of the number of uh, the microorganisms and uh, the depth of the carrier's lesion. And at the end, we have a quantification of the demineralization process. You see, you see the values of the measurement from 0 to 99. And uh, depending on these uh, values, we have a final decision what to do, what should be the treatment to do any, something or not to do, to be um, as conservative as possible or to go to the traditional ways of treatment of uh, dental carriers. So specifically, this tool is uh, used uh, in uh, the Department of uh, Pediatric Dental Medicine especially, but uh, it can be used uh, for specializing dentists uh, as well. This is uh, another a uh, way to use uh, lasers. These are lasers in the treatment of uh, dental caries. Uh, laser energy is uh, preferred nowadays, especially for children, because it's a fast, very conservative method uh, for cleaning, for removing the carious tissue. This is the example of uh, the carious, and uh, this is uh, the final result after the use of uh, the laser. And the most important thing that we should mention concerning this method is that it is a painless one and it is not dangerous uh, for the dental pulp. So I'm going to, to start the video. Uh -huh. This is it. So this is the way the laser light removes. This is the same case you see on the top. It's a very short one. So it, it looks easy, but you should be very skillful because the, 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 the energy, if you go outside, then you remove some of the normal tissue. So you have to stick uh, to the one that is uh, decayed. The other, other thing that I want to mention, other innovation, I think some of you uh, uh, um, know about this. Uh, this is the CADCAM technology. This is the so-called computer-aided design and computer-assisted uh, manufacturing. Uh, some of the most important advantages of this uh, method are that we can eliminate some of the steps uh, during uh, the treatment. We do not need conventional impression. This is an optical impression. But then we do not need a temporary restoration and a lot of visits of the patient. So you go to the dental practice and in one visit, you have everything from the beginning till the end. And um, it's a high manufacturing speed and high quality of restorative materials. I'm going to demonstrate how it uh, works. This is the preparation, as you see here. And then we start <clears throat> with uh, the optical impression. It's painless, of course. This is the optical impression. Then comes the other step, computer-aided design. This is the computer. You are working with a special uh, system 
then this is uh, the computer design of the final restoration. And then it comes the computer assisted manufacturing. This is the ceramic block, which is milled into the machine for a few minutes. It's really very fast. This is the milling process from this block. And you'll see at the end, the prepared restoration. So after the impression, the patient, this is the already prepared restoration, which should be cemented into the preparation that has been done in the beginning. So the patient is waiting for some time somewhere till the restoration is done, and then it is cemented. This is about cut cam technology. Uh, endodontics is something that patients really dislike because uh, it's uh, a laborious and sometimes uh, painless procedure. And uh, when we speak about endodontics, it's a branch of dental medicine which is dealing with uh, the diagnosis and treatment of dental pulp and uh, periodontal tissues. These are the smallest objects uh, into the dental profession. So really it is very important if you are able to work under magnification because magnification makes the thing much uh, larger. Of course, you see it uh, normal, but uh, really I'll show it in a minute. Uh, we are speaking about millimeter or parts of millimeters so the object is very small you have to find it and then of course uh, to shape clean and uh, fill the root canals so this is um, one example of how the microscope is used this is under magnification it is not the the real size of the tooth it looks uh, even under the microscope you see this is uh, the access to the root canal. It's a, a small part, so you see. <laughs> it, it, oh, don't worry. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is all, it's a short one, don't worry. I just want to, to, to show you, I just want to show you uh, how small is the object. So uh, be patient when you have to uh, to be uh, to suffer such a procedures <laughs> and, and um, you have to understand your dentist it's much more difficult for the dentist than for the patient um, microcomputed tomography microcomputed tomography is a labor uh, is a method that is uh, uh, for laboratory work. We cannot uh, use it um, uh, for patients, but nevertheless, uh, what is seen when you can use uh, such uh, technology? Uh, on the left side above, uh, you see this is radiography, uh, one X-ray that you know, you have seen such X-rays of uh, your teeth, but you see you have the tooth and one line in the center, this is the root canal. But uh, how it looks uh, in reality, it's not such a simple one. When you speak about the pulp space, it's really a very, very complex one. All these red lines that you see, that you see here, they show how complex is the root canal space that should be founded, treated, and at the end filled. So it's really very difficult. And uh, with the help of uh, this uh, technology, nowadays we are really aware what are the difficulties and the challenges. Uh, and of course, uh, all the time dentists are trying to find better and better techniques for cleaning. This is very important for cleaning all this uh, complex uh, space. Another uh, example of the use of uh, micro CT, uh, this is, uh, mm, uh, it is used very widely for research work because uh, the uh, samples that are used, they are not distracted because before the introduction of micro CT in uh, our research work, we have to 
uh, dissect the samples, so they are used only once. But uh, now with the use of micro CT, we can use it uh, a lot of times. And um, the micro CT examination of one sample, it allows uh, a lot of images for one millimeter. And at the end, you can see what happens with one root canal, let's say, from the coronal to the apical part. And this is really a short demonstration of one lower, this mandible incisor. These are the smallest teeth here in the center. This is the root canal. And what happens with this root canal when you start from the coronal till the apical part? It starts as one. Then you see it becomes a little bit oval and then it separates for some time. And when it goes apically and apically, it again connects and so on and so on. So it is one real demonstration of a real tooth, what happens uh, with the anatomy. So uh, it's really, it's really difficult uh, to be an endodontic specialist uh, nowadays. And at the end of my demonstration, I want to pay attention on uh, something that we are very proud uh, because at the end of the previous year, uh, we have our Center for Modern uh, Technologies uh, and uh, it is um, a simulation center. It is uh, for preclinical education and uh, for uh, specializing uh, dentists uh, as well. It consists of uh, five rooms, each of one, uh, each of, it, of the room with uh, twelve working uh, places, and um, here in uh, these uh, rooms, students under digital control they can improve their skills uh, in different uh, dental specialties. This is just uh, uh, these are slides from the opening uh, ceremony of uh, this uh, center, and now a few words about uh, the center itself. As you see here, we have uh, ergonomic uh, workstations. Uh, These are phantom heads. Uh, they simulate uh, perfectly everything uh, concerning uh, the patient. The position of uh, the body, we have um, uh, injectors uh, for the water. We have uh, cheeks, uh, the teeth, everything uh, is uh, like uh, the situation in the patient. Uh, then uh, we have um, uh, the scanners. Oh, sorry. These are the scanners. This is very important because uh, this is uh, in the basis uh, of the dental teacher concept. I'll explain it uh, in a minute. Then we have a video demonstration system and the communication system. The communication system is important because uh, it communicates the teacher with all the students uh, on their workstations and uh, this uh, communication allows the teacher to send one and the same task to all of the students, or it is possible to send different tasks to group of students or to every of the students. So it's very easy to communicate uh, with uh, all the group of uh, students. What is uh, uh, the basic thing concerning the dental teacher concept? You see that uh, we have um, the ability to visualize, visualize and to validate uh, the preparations. This is one example of a normal tooth. And then we have the preparation of the teacher. This is the basic uh, preparation. And then we have the preparation of the student. What happens after that? Here on this uh, part of the slide, you see we overlie the preparation of the student to the preparation of the teacher and in different colors, you see what is more, what is less. Another possibility of uh, this uh, dental teacher, you see the same preparation, but this is uh, a crown of the tooth, the normal crown of the tooth. And you can see what are the distances that are expected to be uh, at the end. And on this uh, other slide, you see a lot of colors. And uh, this is very mm, important uh, part. Uh, and because as you see in the green color, 
it is said to the student, depending on the intensity of the green. You have here, as you have a scale, so this means that you have prepared less than it's necessary. If it's green, it means that you have removed more than it is necessary. So this is very important because um, it's not possible to be seen here, but we are speaking about millimeters and part of millimeters again. Everything concerning dentistry is in millimeters. Centimeter is too, too much for us. And my last slide here concerning the, uh, the same dental teacher. Uh, <laughs> Every uh, student has the possibility to scan as much as he or she wants uh, his uh, preparation and to compare it uh, with the teacher's preparation. But when the student decides that I am ready and I want to be checked, then there's a checkbox. And when they uh, activate this checkbox, there is no return back. So then, then comes the evaluation and you see here there's pass or fail. So it depends uh, what will happen when uh, the two uh, results are all the light. And the last possibility, uh, you see this is a collection of students, different students' preparations. So you can have all of the students' preparations compared to the one of the teacher and uh, the, the normal tooth. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was interesting for you. So now I give the floor to Dr. Stanek. Hello. I will tell you a couple of things about the thermovisiography in the skin allergy diagnosis. Uh, the thermogeography is a modern method in which uh, use the thermal camera and can assess the temperature of the surface of different objects. And if uh, we have areas with the same temperature, we have the same color on the picture that we get. And then if the temperature is different, we have differ different colors <clears throat> on the picture that we have from the thermal camera. The, cam the thermal camera uses the infrared light to measure the temperature of the surface of the object. And the skin allergy diagnosis, this is a process when uh, the patient goes to a doctor and he wants to know if he is allergic to some allergens. And the, the, the doctor uh, put allergen in a contact with his skin and evaluate the dental the skin inflammation after that. So we have basically two the skin allergy diagnostic tests. The first is the big test. It is used for fast, uh, quick uh, allergy, allergic reactions. And for the slow speed allergic reactions, we use the patch test. The prick test is performed on the forearm and the patch test is on the back of the patient. Uh, here we can see two readings, the standard reading and the uh, thermal reading of the results. In the prick test, you see the first sample, uh, we have redness and swallowing, which is one classical positive reaction to the test. And after that, we have three other tests done, but there we have no redness, no swelling, and we have negative reactions there. When we make the infrared uh, picture, we also see difference in the temperature. The reaction, which is positive, is with light color, white color, because the temperature there is very high. It's 36.5 degrees. And the negative reactions are with red color, because they are all with lower temperature, around 34 degrees. This is how we can compare the positive and the negative reaction in the pre-test. In the patch test, it's almost the same. We have two strong positive reactions. We see the redness and the swallowing on the place on the back. And also the temperature is uh, around 35 degrees. You see there are green areas where the reactions are. And the surrounding area is uh, orange because the temperature there is a little bit lower than the temperature on the reactions. 
So in conclusion, we can measure the temperature difference uh, to understand when the reaction is positive and when it is negative. In the quick test, if we have temperature difference more than 0 0.5 degrees, we can conclude that the reaction is positive. And if it's less, then the reaction is negative. For the patch test, we can have uh, mild and strong positive reactions. And if the reaction is mild or negative, then the temperature is in the uh, in the scope of minus 0 0.25 degrees to plus 0 0.8 degrees. We cannot distinguish these two types of reactions. But we can distinguish the strong positive reactions because in their cases, the temperature difference is more than 0 0.8 degrees. So in conclusion, the thermovisiography is one additional method, objective method, that can give more information for the doctor about the allergic inflammation that he assesses on the skin of the patient in skin allergy diagnostic test. Thank you.